My mission is simple, to make you money. I'm here to level the playing field for all investors. There's always a bull market somewhere, and I promise to help you find it. Mad Money starts now. Hey, I'm Kramer. Welcome to Mad Money. Welcome to Kramer America. Other people want to make friends, I'm just trying to make you some money. My job is not just to entertain you, but to educate and teach you. So call me at 1-800-743-CBC or tweet me at Jim Kramer. Look at that. Virus could soon peak in New York City. We've already seen the apex in Madrid. Italy's clearly over the hump. So I guess that means buy stocks, right? It's time to go long. Buy the S&P 500. Cover your shorts. The bull is back. Witness today's run, Dow surging 1,627 points, marking its best day in two weeks. S&P soaring 7.03%, NASDAQ pull voting 7.33%. Can it really be this easy? Or does this represent too much optimism? I think it's a bit of the latter. Wall Street's in the grips of index buyers and traders who only care about the number of new coronavirus cases, the number of hospitalizations, and the mortality rate. The index buying was so intense today that it moved stocks up like they were playthings. Now, does that mean we should buy the NASDAQ when we have more ventilators, but uh, sell it if we don't have enough personal protective equipment? Uh, do we buy the S&P retail ETF when we get a decent number from, I don't know, Governor Cuomo? No, no, that, it's kind of ridiculous. We're simply seeing, though, the flip side of what happens when people were downbeat as they were last week when the president's team told us some pretty horrifying death projections if this thing didn't slow down. I do not like markets that are driven by index buying or selling because neither is sustainable. Both fake people out. The people who, uh, when they see the big futures down, they get scared and they sell low. And when it goes up really high, what do they do? Buy, 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 buy. They buy high and then they get smoked. I'm trying to fight that. Don't get me wrong. It's great that we're starting to flatten the curve with this pandemic. I am glad that the worst case scenario may be coming off the table. I am glad more people may live than we thought after one, one of those press conferences last week. It's a relief. I am thrilled that so many small businesses applied for money to get back in business, particularly with the community banks. That may have been the best untold story. But none of that necessarily translates into better earnings per share for corporate America. And when you're investing in the stock market, you know what? The overall level of the index won't matter if you're buying individual stocks, and many of you do. I'd be more forgiving of this attitude if it were all in a vacuum. When you're a day trader, you don't have to care about earnings. But if you're an investor, you've got to think about how the market will react once companies start reporting the results en masse. And that's going to be real soon. If you're worried about the state of the economy, and you should be, then maybe you should let the market cool off after a day like today. I don't like buying on top of this index fund wave. Again, I am neutral. I don't like it when the future sends things down, and I don't like it when the future sends things up. I like individual stock buying, and I like thought. Still, let's go over what this big update does mean at a time when a lot of people are desperately searching for light at the end of the tunnel. You and me both. First, if you haven't been contributing to your 401k this year, well, last week certainly would have been a good time. We we said stay the course. But now you got to wait. you got to wait for a profit-taking session. I'm not calling this a short-covering rally in a bear market. That doesn't make any – doesn't help us, doesn't get us anywhere. I believe we ultimately will beat the virus because of science. However, it's a mistake to come in after a day like today, even for 401k money. I don't like to chase. The big buying opportunity was last week. I don't think the whole market has bottomed yet, though. But as I told members of the ActionAlertsPlus.com club, I do think many individual stocks have bottomed. So why not just buy right here? Well, you know what? I care, and you care, too, if you pay up 6 7% more than you had to on Friday. I care, and I bet you will not feel good if you come in on top of a mini bull market start to finish because COVID-19 perhaps can be beaten, albeit with tens of thousands of casualties. Yet what happens if we get another leg down based on some I don't know, bad economic numbers that makes you panic and all these index fund buyers become sellers. Don't put yourself in a position where you'll be tempted to buy high and sell low. Be patient. After last week, I am convinced there'll be more selling. 
What about individual sectors? Today, we saw incredible strength in Ford, in tech, in retail, the banks, and industrials. Let's dissect each one. First, tech sold rips during rally for both the Cloud Kings and the data center plays. I think the rally in the Cloud Kings, I'm going to call it suspect. We keep hearing about deals being delayed and budgets being cut back. I think it may be tough for them to meet their numbers. Will service now be able to convert here? Will Workday thrive when there are no more mergers, as they often get more business when newly combined companies choose their software? Are Ring Central and Coupa 2i? Is that about Splunk? Does Adobe deserve that rally? You need to take them case by case, but I'm betting their stocks would go down if they reported tomorrow. They're too likely to have to caveat their earnings with worries about near-term COVID woes, and that sends them down. But the data center hardware plays like Micron, Western Digital, Intel, NVIDIA, AMD, I think those could have terrific quarters because there's so much demand for their products and their stocks are still inexpensive. I have liked them, and I reiterate that I like them now. That's great also when we get the data center news for Alphabet, for Facebook, for Amazon. It means there's strong demand. But Alphabet and Facebook, they may have strong demand, but they have too much exposure to a crumbling advertising market. Lots of eyeballs unpaid. I say go with Amazon. Or if you want more exposure to gaming and PC and data center, you can still, even up here, by Microsoft. How about telco tech? Problematic. Okay, nothing's really changed here. We own Apple for my travel trust. Of course, own Apple, don't trade it. But it, look, I think that if you haven't bought it yet, you don't come in and buy it up 20. You just don't. I think the downside, it could be significant. Uh, don't own this one if you can't take some pain. As for me, I'm happy to buy more Apple into weakness. Oops. I salute Tim Cook for his work in getting us personal protective equipment. I'm also thrilled about how Mark Benny, I've got a 747 filled with PPE from China here. In business, the great, is business the greatest source for social good or what? Cook, Benny, I, thank you. Retail caught fire today, but with the exception of Walmart, Costco, and Amazon, this string felt like ETF short covering. Most retailers won't be able to uh, whistle past their debt covenants if they don't get the economy moving again, at least by back to school season. Now, if you want to understand what I'm talking about, I need you to go look at the work of Oliver Chen. He's a terrific talent analyst. Put on some numbers last week that justified the gigantic declines in retail stocks. And yeah, I know they can bump up here, but they can even go up further. But I'm worried. Many of the companies don't have the balance sheets to survive. Two that do, Home Depot and Lowe's, are solid, but now I'm worried about the spring. Will they have the big customers they usually get? Normally, May would be gardening season for them, but maybe we don't have a gardening season this year. I've had 32 years of gardening, and I think this year could break the string. And I like to make stuff. It's my favorite thing I do in life, but I got a feeling that there will not be, at least for me, a gardening season, and it's everything. People don't like to invest in their homes during a downturn. It feels like an expenditure rather than an investment. That also makes me worried about Home Depot and Lowe's. And these are great companies that I just want you to tell you, go buy their stocks. Next, the banks. I can't cotton to these. One minute, they're buying back stock in over fist at very high levels. The next minute, they can't do their buybacks. And that whole thing looks like they paid too much. The principal reason I liked Citigroup was that they decided to repurchase 7 to 8% of their share count every year. Well, guess what? That buyback's over. Now it's the dividend. But you shouldn't switch reasons why you like something, even though 5% is nothing to sneeze at. Hard for me to feel enthusiastic. Maybe the banks will find a level where they're too cheap, although today's rally sure didn't help. To me, the banks, are, they've gotten risky again after this move up. Even though they've already gone down a great deal. We've been telling ActionAlertsPlus.com members that I don't have much appetite until we see the earnings. Maybe they'll surprise us, probably to the downside. I do like fintech at all times, and I like the PayPal and the Visa. They're terrific. Yes, and MasterCard. These are sainted stocks, meaning even if they miss numbers, they'll probably go higher. Can't even sell them up here. One derivative, the home builders, they exploded higher today, 15, 20% gains. I'm putting this move in the are you kidding me category? If you own a home builder, I recommend selling some roll your position tomorrow morning. This rally is too extreme. Finally, there are the industrials. There are so few of them that when Wall Street starts feeling more confident about the global economy, the whole group flies higher because there's so few of them and so much money going into them. If you own an industrial here, you're betting on a rapid return to normalcy with the economy bouncing back in record time, including a major increase in oil prices, along with the return of auto sales. Construction, not going to happen. Specious reasoning. We don't need any new buildings. In fact, the stay-at-home office is a knife in the heart of the real estate industry. It's why the REITs have been such disasters. We don't need as many retailers. We don't need as many nursing homes. We don't need as many office buildings. I, we don't need as many movie theaters. I don't want to own anything connected to them. Worst of all, we need a lot less oil and gas. You see, because it's like not anybody on the road. Don't bet on a quick industrial recovery. Mistake. Bottom line, I'll become more sustainably bullish when there's more testing. 
test, 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 when there's less fear of getting sick, 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 and most importantly, when the unemployment rate peaks, which is why my travel trust, which had been putting money to work, putting money, putting money to work, sold stock today. You know what? Unemployment matters more than a potential peaking in a coronavirus transmission. When we get a peak in unemployment, many stocks will be buys. Until then, well, you're going to have to deal with the sell programs and deal with the buy programs, but don't be fooled. We don't have actual stock buying going on on days like today. Let's go to David in Ohio. David! Hey, how you doing? I'm not doing badly at all, David. How about you? I'm all right. Trying to stay out of the way. (laughs) All right, what's going on? All right, I had a question. Um, What could a novice investor learn from this market? And should I look into investing short-term or long-term? And also, what sector should I be looking at? Okay, uh, it depends on your time horizon. Younger people should be looking at tech and biotech. And that's because they got their whole lives to make up uh, with paychecks what they may lose otherwise. If a young person now, I think you should be thinking about what tech do you really love? Is it Zoom or is it Amazon? Do you like to use Alphabet? Or do you find yourself thinking, you know what, I'm worried about cybersecurity? Think like that. Or do you think Regeneron's going to come up with something for the end, antibody against the illness? But you should be thinking longer term. Well, as you get older, you have much more to worry about. You can't risk being in too crazy a market, and you got to scale back. All right, the market rallied hard today. But I don't want you to get ahead of yourself. I saw a lot of index fund buying, not a lot of individual stock buying, and therefore it's a little more dangerous to come in on top of it. Oh, man, tonight, the CEO of Zoom is saying he really messed up as the company continues to face backlash over security issues. I'm going to sit down with Eric Yuan and find out what's, what he's doing to get it back on track. He didn't duck the show. Then, which stocks could get a boost from the millions of people working at home? I got a list for you. And I told you most REITs are in real trouble here, but some could be worth considering, and they haven't really moved. So stay with Kramer. Don't miss a second of Mad Money. Follow at Jim Kramer on Twitter. Have a question? Tweet Kramer. Hashtag Mad Tweets. Send Jim an email to madmoney at CNBC.com or give us a call at 1-800-743-CNBC. Miss something? Head to madmoney.cnbc.com. 